In the top stories, a British investor still willing to raise $2 billion for Barbados. An opposition MP says the BLP should not get distracted by internal problems. And Dinesh Rambin speaks ahead of the West Indies Test Series against Sri Lanka. Welcome to Nation News for Friday, October 9th, 2015. I'm Natasha Beckles. British investor Andrew Stewart says he is still willing to raise $2 billion on the international market for Barbados. Last December, Mr. Stewart and his business partner Stuart Fordham said they could use their international connections to mobilize a bond to save the country from the International Monetary Fund. Government did not take up the offer, but in an exclusive interview with Nation News on Friday, Mr. Stewart said he was still willing to help the country in any way he could. However, he said the Barbados economy has bottomed out and will begin to improve. I'm an investor in this country through restaurants and hotels, and I have free houses here. And this economy is not going to fall into the sea. Uh, Chris Sinclair is a very, very able minister. Uh, the doctor is a very able governor of the central bank, and I have engaged with them. It's not my position to tell the government um, or the whole of the parliament, the Democratic Labour Party and the Barbados Labour Party, what they should do. But in the event that they did want to borrow money from the international community, the international community would obviously look over their shoulders at the Fitch Savage downgrade that happened at the end of uh, uh, six months ago. But I'm assuring you that the, um, the appetite within the world financial community to put a bond together for Barbados is still there. Nothing has changed with that. Mr. Stewart was speaking to Nation News on Friday following a presentation of tablets to Welch's Primary School. Also speaking to Nation News following that event was Opposition Member of Parliament Kerry Simmons. He said the Barbados Labour Party should not allow internal wranglings in the Christchurch West constituency to distract it from keeping a close eye on government's policies. He said government had committed to cutting transfers and subsidies to statutory corporations and this would result in about 2,000 people losing their jobs. And the Barbados Labour Party has to be at the forefront, at the vanguard of a fight to make sure that that is not done in a haphazard way and that national consensus is built on how we go about managing this potential dislocation of human souls. What we had as past recent experience is completely unacceptable and the Barbados Labour Party must be at the forefront of keeping government on its toes. We cannot therefore allow ourselves to be distracted by what is taking place in Christchurch West and for too long that has been what is on the front page of the Barbados papers. We need to have on the front page of the Barbados papers the Barbados Labour Party's insistence that government be accountable and responsible and build national consensus on how we manage this matter of potential um, dislocation arising out of the changes to the statutory corporations in the country. From early next year, visitors to Barbados will have the opportunity to dine with a Bajan. The new initiative of the Barbados Product Authority will allow visitors to build friendships with locals while eating local foods. Manager of the National Tourism Host Program, Marsha Aline, said the program was aimed at creating more opportunities for visitors to interact with Barbadians who don't work in the tourism sector. Fourth and fifth form students will have a chance to develop their entrepreneurial skills again this year. The Barbados Entrepreneurship Foundation has partnered with Flo and Scotiabank to launch the fifth annual $20 challenge. Students will be given a loan of $20, basic business guidance, and six weeks to launch and operate their business. 22 schools have so far signed up. Project leader Keith Miller told the media entrepreneurship is the way forward, but passion, ambition, and drive can't be taught in schools. The psychiatric hospital staged an open day and health fair on Friday in observance of World Mental Health Day. That's on October 10th. Senior nursing officer Denise Nichols said the activities were focused on the theme dignity in mental health. What we found too that oftentimes that mental health uh, 
discriminate off against and stigmatize. And part of the activity is really to help promote that dignity, open the hospital to persons from the coast, so that they come in and they get a chance to mingle with our patients and they will see that mental illness is a disability just like any other disability. And because it is, persons who suffer with mental disabilities should be included, should be given an opportunity to contribute to society, to be a part of their, their family, to learn and play within the society. And so the effort is ready to promote that. Sport. Former West Indies Test captain Dinesh Ramblin says he expects leg spinner Devendra Bishu to pose a threat to Sri Lankan batsmen during the two-match test series which begins on Wednesday. Bishu is back in the squad after recovering from a finger injury which he sustained during the second test against England earlier this year. Ramblin says he has no doubt that Bishu will do well and the other players just need to back him up. The wicketkeeper said he expects the pitches to have something for both batsmen and bowlers. It's very hot, um, as we, we, we found out ourselves the last couple of days, but it was, uh, it's from the last time, it was 10 years ago, um, the, the pitches here is a lot different, I would say. Um, we've seen a lot more grass on the pitches, so I think our batsmen will be challenged a lot more. Um, not as much grass in the Caribbean pitches, but it's good for, for our bowlers as well to get something out of, of the new ball and something throughout the test match. Um, something will be there for the spinners as well because the place is hot and it's going to deteriorate and get a lot drier as the game goes on. So. And finally, a British man whose legal name is something long and complicated says Facebook suspended his account and refused to accept proof of his identity. The 30-year-old who was born William Wood changed his name legally in 2007. He said he previously had trouble verifying his identity but the most recent incident was the most complicated. He said he submitted copies of his driver's license, passport, credit cards and various pieces of mail but Facebook still said the documents were not sufficient. The account was finally reinstated after Mr. Complicated sent a link to a news article about his problems. And that's Nation News for Friday. For more news, log on to nationnews.com as well as YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Remember to pick up your papers over the weekend or subscribe to our e-paper. And look out for the weekend buzz a little later. Thank you so much for joining us.